All right, welcome to Statement Games Live. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, great to kind of like, you know, be live again and doing like another show here. I'm going to give you three reasons as to, to why people should be checking this out and listening to this show here. The first one being on a weekly basis, you and I are going to break down the insights and happenings that kind of like, you know, take place throughout the game, gaming industry. Also, you and I are kind of like you know uh, budding entrepreneurs, so we're going to share some some stories. Some of them are going to be good, some of them can be bad, but hopefully, it's uh, it's all good fun and, and entertaining. Um, there's definitely going to be some some lessons to be learned here, some do's, some don'ts. So that's kind of a fun aspect of why you should actually be listening and checking us out here. And then also, uh, of course, a big part of our show here is we're going to be talking about this new form of DFS, which is statement games. And although this new form of DFS is 100% free to play, it's going to give you the ability to win some cash. So it, it, it's something that I'm excited about. And uh, hopefully those are three core reasons as to why you should be checking this out. Oh, absolutely. And make sure everyone out there listening, subscribe to our YouTube channel, give the show a thumbs up, leave a comment about what you liked about the show and how we could improve. But with that, Mark, how are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I guess I'm coming in kind of like in a little bit of hot here. Uh, maybe this is one thing that we can get some feedback. I'll throw it back over to you and maybe we can actually get some feedback from the audience as well. I'm not sure what the protocols are with, uh, with the Google police and all that stuff here, but as we tweak the show, make edits, modifications and things like that. Are, are we allowed to like, can I curse? Can I, can I swear on this show? Is that frowned upon or is that kind of like, you know, all right here or am I allowed to say asshole shit things, things, <laughs> You know, like like that here. If I feel the need, I'm not, I don't want to make this a vulgar, um, you know, um, misguided, yeah. mislanguage type of a show here. But sometimes when I have the urge, I, I might say something that's a little off cuff. I wanted to run it by you instead of dropping a bomb on you and, um, you know, facing the repercussions of Nathan in, in, in the future, you know? Well, if you listen to my show, the IDP guys, uh, we love our colorful language. So uh, <laughs> we utilize that on YouTube and, uh, you know, it's kind of down to what kind of show you want to put on. Our show is yeah. definitely not for kids. So, uh, <laughs> But you guys had is... some partners and things like that. And I know like the editing police had to kind of like, you know, rear its ugly head every once in a while. I'm not sure if. We want to follow the same guidelines with statement games live or, Hey, you know what the hell with it? We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we partnered up with a, a group at one point and they wanted to keep their, their feed clean. So we, I went through and had to count every swear word and put a nice little beep on it or sometimes <laughs> not whole sentences, depending on what was said. So, uh, it's not fun, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's kind of up to the creators and what we want to do. All right. Well, if, if, if I'm casting my vote, I want this to officially be my vote and where if a swear word comes out, let's mm. not, you know, put beeps or anything like that on it. If it's something completely messed up here, I mean, look, you know, I mean, technically we're calling the show statement games live, but. We're obviously not live right now. I'm sure there's magic editing capabilities and where if I make myself sound like a complete jackass, we can go back and, and take that thing out. Or, uh, hey, you know what? Maybe we can just start the segment all over again. But for mm -hmm. right now, my vote, swear words, and all that other related stuff here, it stays in as long as it's not excessive. And, we, and yeah. as long as we don't sound stupid, you know? True. Very true. And for my vote, I'll say, fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, then on that note here, let's, uh, you know, I, I want to wish every you, your family, and uh, everybody else who's checking out the show here a very happy Thanksgiving. It, it's definitely a, a crazy time, and I'm kind of curious to see what the holidays are going to look like within my own personal family. I mean, usually I do some traveling. It's not kind of like, you know, extensive or anything like that here, but uh, living in the New York area, I uh, you know usually travel up to either the Boston or the Philadelphia area. That type of stuff here has been canceled for this year. Uh, we're not kind of like ruling out Christmas or anything like that here. But um, if you are traveling, you know, be safe. Um, and I know that it's different for, for everybody this time of year here. But uh, we hope that everybody does have an opportunity to enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark, I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving this week. And um, it's uh, it's definitely a different one. That's for sure. Uh, 2020's thrown a a curveball in the holiday planning. So uh, I've got family coming in from out of town, just my nice. mother. 
Um, it's also her birthday next week. So uh, we wanted to do that for her. And uh, so there's a little bit of traveling going on. So we're going to maintain whatever health, you know, health safety things we can as far as uh, quarantining and, um, you know, limiting access to other people, but try and spend some time with family. Uh, so you're hosting? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. It'd just be her. We did a, a gotcha. Friendsgiving uh, last week. I don't have a whole lot of family in this area. So uh, the only one is my mother coming out. Do you cook at all? Oh, yeah. I, right. man, you've got the best Thanksgiving turkey around. Uh, <laughs> that, really? Okay. Yep, it's a pretty bold statement. Oh, it, <laughs> I mean, there's a I, lot of people 100%. that take pride in their turkeys. You're, you're claiming that you have the best turkey around. Best turkey. Is this a uh, regular oven or deep fried? Uh, regular oven. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Uh, I have not heard one person come by. We've been doing this recipe now for about three years, and we have people come by all the time. They always say it's the best turkey they've ever had. Um, all right. And it, it just comes down, and it's simple. It's not even difficult. Like, we brine it for three days and then utilize a mayonnaise herb uh, covering uh, mm -hmm. while it's in the oven. And it just comes out perfect every time. All right. Might have to. Prompt. Well, first of all, I don't cook. Um, mm. I, I leave that to other people. But if I did decide to, to cook turkey, and who knows, with kind of like, you know, the different rules and regulations for uh, for the holiday season and things like that, depending on where you're living in here. Um, I like having another turkey on Christmas Day. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, – Maybe I'll kind of like, you know, poach that recipe from you at, if, uh, if you don't mind. We'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear. <laughs> we'll see yeah, kind of like, how everything absolutely. goes. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it, it's been a while. This is our first show, kind of like in you know, about three weeks here. So for – and the reason for that, I'll get into that in, in a second here. But, uh, well, I'll, I'll get into it like, you know, right now here. So for all of the females or the girls that are actually watching this show right now, I want you to just kind of like, you know, take a good look at, at my good friend, Nate C here. Just, just take, take a look at that pretty face. And then as you take a look at it, just, just kiss it goodbye because officially you mm -hmm. are off the market because you wound up getting married about three weeks ago. Congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's awesome to be on the other side of that. It's <laughs> a very stressful time leading up to it <laughs> that is for sure um yeah. especially like day before day of but um once it was over and the honeymoon for the week after was very relaxing and now i'm starting to get my life back in order uh moving forward with uh you know regular day-to-day -day life but now i got a ring on my finger so <laughs> There you go now during wedding week as well as the honeymoon were were you allowed to take a peek and watch kind of like you know, some football or some sports or, you know, for, you know, your choice and whatever it is that may have kind of like, you know, happened here. You just decided, Hey, you know what, because this is kind of like, you know, a big part of your life and kind of like, you know, what you do Did you completely yeah. check out of sports for a good, you know, two weeks here and, you know, decide to kind of like, you know, take a look at it when, uh, when you're back, which I think you got back, what late last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Late last week, I was kind of 50, 50. So there were a few games that I wanted to watch. Um, obviously, uh, well, the first week was the Lions. I wanted to watch the Lions, and then I didn't want to watch them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but there were, you know, some Ravens games, Kansas City games that I was tuning into. Um, my uh, spending some time with my grandfather, uh, and he's a big football fan, so we watched some sports one of the Sundays, and uh, you know, just trying to make make memories with family while I was out there utilizing football. Um, so in that aspect, I did watch some games as far as like my routine of being able to keep up with everything and having sports opinions and all that stuff. Nah, that was out the window. There was too much. Gotcha. Going on. So you were just watching it. Hey, you know what? You know, uh, not that you wanted to take your mind off of the wedding and things like that here, but you were watching like a, like, like a true normal day-to-day -day fan, not necessarily as a content creator here. You were kind of like, you know, watching right. it for the purpose of, Hey, let's uh, let's enjoy, enjoy the game and, and, and get, yeah. you know, be distracted for a couple of hours and just have a little fun with it with uh, with family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, enjoyment. Drink a few beers. 
enjoy time with family. That was about all I could handle at that point. Uh, anything more than that would have been just too much. All right, real quick, and then we'll kind of like move on to some of the other stuff. Uh, uh, highlight of uh, of the wedding or the honeymoon? Did you get to check out or do anything kind of like you know specific or special or something that was kind of like you know, really fun that uh, you might want to recommend uh, for people who I don't know because you actually got you wound up getting married in the upstate Michigan kind of like you know area. Yep. So, is there a uh, travel tip that you could potentially pass along to? People who, whether it be, you know, now or next year or um, because you specifically like, you know, did it. You want to get married in the fall. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily. And I guess there's a big difference between summertime upstate, kind of like in Michigan and kind of like in a full time. So uh, with with, with your full cap on uh, travel tip or recommendation from an upstate Michigan perspective, something to either check out or avoid. Yeah, uh, here I'll give you one of both. Uh, the first thing is, so <laughs> our um, our wedding was on October thirty first because we wanted to maintain uh, Halloween as our uh, anniversary. We've had it since we started dating, and then uh, we went to Michigan where all our family is. So the avoid is that that time of year is very up in the air weather wise. Uh, in Michigan, uh-huh. we had 60 degree days leading up to the wedding and the day after the wedding, it snowed like a <laughs> lot. It snowed a lot up there. Yeah. And the day uh, before was 60 degrees. And like two days before was 60 degrees. The day of the wedding was about 45. Uh, it was just a, it, it was a crazy storm that came in right as we were driving across the state. Um, and so we got caught in it. So not fun. Make sure if you're going to travel to Michigan that time of year, have your snow tires or be ready. <laughs> I've been Just watching be ready the, for the snow, weather. But then also have yeah. some uh, lighter things in the suitcase here because you could mm-hmm. have a surprise 60 degree day pop up on you as well. Absolutely. But on the thing to check out, uh, we went uh, wine tasting, cider tasting, and actually liquor tasting out in the Grand Traverse region of northern michigan and one of the things that came out of it was we found out that michigan has the highest number of craft breweries like distilleries all of wineries per capita than any other state in the u.s by a long shot like the next state down is like i think minnesota which is like uh I don't know. I think it was like 56 or something people per distillery. I'm not sure that I'm not going to go into the the figures on that, but it was a, is a major difference from Michigan to Minnesota. And we just enjoyed going around, trying all sorts of different um, distilleries and wineries and cideries and uh, grand Traverse distillery. If you ever get over there has some amazing liquor, just, vodkas and and whiskeys that we tried out and it was very delicious shit so you guys like the parties is basically what you said oh, yeah michigan likes to get down that they do <laughs> right. cool well while while you were you know out kind of like you know um having a ball you know getting married and obviously being selfish and uh, disregarding the show because uh <laughs> you know obviously you had other things to kind of like, you know, do here. I was kind of like, you know, back at the office, slaving away, working on statement games, building out some features and things like that here. So, um, you know, just to kind of like, you know, transition into kind of like, you know, what we're doing back at home here, you know, it's something that we're pretty excited about here. We've been working on it for um, probably the better part of like the good past, like three and a half, kind of like, you know, four weeks. I was, uh, I was hopeful that it would have been done like a lot sooner, but Hey, you know what here, when you're trying to like do cool things here and making the experience better for users here, sometimes like it took a little bit, took a little bit longer. So uh, one of the bigger questions that I actually get around the state McCann's platform is basically around, Hey, look, you know what? I, I like the whole concept of creating private tournaments, and private games here. And uh, I don't mind kind of like inviting, you know, either family members, friends, you know, co-workers, associates, so on and so forth to the game here. But to be honest with you, like, I I just don't know people's contact information. 
Um, I mean, I guess you can kind of like, you know, say the same thing about me. I mean, obviously, you know, I've known my dad my whole life. I've known my brother since I'm three years old here. I don't know what their phone numbers are. I don't know what their email addresses are here. Basically, what you do is you go into your phone, you go into your contacts list, you, you know, you have the, the speed dial or the settings kind of like, you know, set where you can find them, kind of can e find them easily. You push a button and next thing you know, you have an opportunity to send an email, send a text or, or make kind of like an old phone call. It's not like you're remembering these things off the top of your head here. So from within the statement games platform, we've created a whole section that's a little bit more of a caveat dedicated towards referrals and that gives you the ability to kind of create contact lists from your address book. So um, is this something that you kind of like you know, want to pull up or should we just talk about, talk, talk through it kind of like, you know, first? Yeah, let me pull it up here. There you go. So in the upper right hand corner, you can actually see there's a new widget that's been added to the navigation of bar called kind of like, you know, referrals. And when you click that, um, when you scroll down, you can actually see that you can import your contacts and the four address books that we've started out with are Google, Yahoo, Hotmail, and, uh, and Outlook. So if you kind of like, you know, hit any of those buttons, once you're kind of like, you know, logged, logged in, um, you're giving the site the permission to, you look, you know, just scrub kind of like, you know, your contacts. Um, it, it imports everything into the uh, statement games platform, but as you can kind of like, you know, see right there, it's pretty kind of like, you know, easy. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you've invited kind of like, you know, these people, but you know, from the bottom right hand corner, if you click import contacts, Go ahead and do so. Um, you can now pick the people that you want to go ahead and invite here. Uh, so basically just pick like a couple of people. And there you go. Go ahead and kind of like you know, hit invite. Now, if you scroll back up like a little bit, now you see that tab that says my contacts. There you go. Moving forward, like those three people are kind of like you know, there. So if you're either creating a, a private tournament or you're playing a lobby tournament and you just want to in, invite kind of like you know, the people that you actually want to play with, those people are kind of like, you know, now there pretty much like, you know, all the time. So it's something that kind of like, you know, it makes it easier to invite the people that you want to invite to play the game with you as opposed to trying to remember this contact information off the top of your head, if that makes yeah. sense. Absolutely. No, that's uh, that's a great feature because you know there's so many times that you're you're wanting to go through and, and build up a, a game. I know I've done this, and it's like, man, I how do I get it to them? I don't remember their their email. Yeah, oh, yeah. let me send them a link, and then maybe they don't get it right away. So it's it just makes it easier. It's just a little bit of uh, easier access. But we'll come back to that, you know, when we go through some of our pick making stuff over here, but uh, that's kind of like, you know, something that's, uh, that's kind of like, you know, fairly new with the, uh, with the statement games platform. Um, it is new. So anybody who's checking this out here, um, if you don't mind, give it a test. Uh, and, and, and please, we say this kind of like, you know, all the time. We're probably going to sound like, you know, a broken record here, but we really do kind of like, you know, mean it as you go through trying statement games and trying some of these features here, let us know what you like. What don't you like here? I can't really stress, you know, how much we really appreciate the feedback that you guys give us. This is how we actually get better as a company and uh, hopefully make the gaming experience for you that much more enjoyable and better. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good there, Mark. Um, so with that, do you want to go into some nuggets of truth that you got prepared? Yeah, us? I want to rant a little bit, if uh, if you don't mind. I mean, I kind of figure we've rant created away. this platform here. Some of these things are, are kind of you know, good. That's why you know I, I said that I might you know want to swear. Uh, I'm preferencing it for the for this specific kind of, like you know moment. And uh, look, you know, I purposely didn't want to talk about this with you offline because I want to get your reaction kind of like, you know, in real time. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, something kind of like you know, look. As, as an entrepreneur, and you kind of like, you know, this here, something comes up every single week. So let me just kind of like, you know, preface it with, uh, with this here. I mean, a big part of our strategy from a marketing perspective has always been and uh, will continue to actually be networking and building relationships with other like-minded kind of like, you know, sports communities. Now, at Statement Games, as of right now, it's growing, but we have a database of about 
15,000 kind of like, you know, names, right? And maybe like, you know, once a week or twice a week, depending on what's going on in the sports world here, you get them all the time. We send out an email newsletter, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, the newsletter is kind of like, you know, talking about like a prime time game. It could be a Monday night football game here or last week. Last week, there was like the Masters. So anytime there's like a big sporting event that's taking place in the sports world, obviously we have a game that's associated with that event on the State and Games platform, and we look to promote it through our newsletter. Just basically telling people, look, you know, get your picks in. There might be a prize that's associated kind of like with that game. And uh, it's just kind of like a good little notification and a nice little system that we have set up here just as a reminder to – Tell people, play state in the games, the game is up, get your picks in, type of a deal. And as part of that newsletter, um, I try and feature a podcast of the day, right? Um, and usually what I do is I kind of like, you know, have some type of little border system, you know, um, that we work out. And where I'll contact a podcast or a blog and I'll say, hey, listen, I would like to feature you guys in my newsletter for an opportunity for me to either come on your show or maybe there's a little write-up that you can kind of like, you know, give statement games um, as part of like your blog here. And it's just a good little, it's a good little trade that kind of like, you know, comes out. I get exposure to a new community and then I'm also kind of like exposing my audience to a podcast or a blog or some type of sports related community that I actually think is worthwhile and, and good. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, why we do it. So I haven't made up my mind, but um, maybe in the future here, maybe I'll start blasting these people out here. I'll actually start naming people kind of by names. I haven't made my decision on that yet here, but I'm going to leave the name out of it for a second, but let's just say that there was this podcast, great guys, that, uh, you know, <laughs> I had an opportunity to give the statement game story to on their podcast. And I, I featured them kind of like in a newsletter. And when we feature them, we ask people, hey, look, if you don't mind, give us a high res uh, digital copy of your logo. And then give me three. This is key. Three mm -hmm. to four lines describing what your podcast, your show or your community or your blog is kind of like you know, all about. Right. And. That's what we kind of like, you know, put in there. So I, I get all this information from the guy and I forward it over to, to my kind of like, you know, person. I, I should have kind of like, you know, read it, but mm -hmm. this is why I actually have, you know, great people that are working with this. They kind of like, you know, scrub it like a little bit here. And as this individual was reading it, it wasn't three or four. It was basically like, like, like a full fledged email. It was, it was a page of a description kind of like, you know, on this show. And then in the show, unknowns to me here, this individual had put links to other Pick'em based contests that were other than statement games, specifically from like, you know, CBS sports line in their description. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, look, you know, we talk about this, this, uh, we talk about uh, college football kind of like, you know, on our show and we have a Pick'em contest on college football on CBS kind of like, you know, sports line. Now, keep in mind, we run and have been running a college pick -em game on statement games for a couple of weeks. So the person that I was actually working with was like, listen, you know, not for nothing here. It's the newsletter that we actually have here. It, it's not that ex extensive, but to have like four paragraphs dedicated to another you know, partner, it just it throws everything kind of, like, you know, out, out of whack. So he just took like the first the first kind of, like, you know, paragraph and we ran with it. And I thought it kind of like, you know, came out. It came out kind of like, you know, pretty good. This blog reached out to me expressing how extremely disappointed that they were that the links to their CBS college football game was left out of the email. So my question is, my question to you is this, mm -hmm. should I appease them or should I basically give them a double middle finger kind of like, you know, F you type of a, a situation here? I mean, not for nothing here. You're now asking me to promote, a, and, and I get it, you know, CBS doesn't look at statement games as a competitor. Like, I, I, I get yeah. it. Let's kind of you know, get this kind of mm -hmm. straight there. But however, I'm trying to remind my audience to play my game, not jump into like another product. And plus, I'm also looking at it from a perspective of where the person that I'm actually working with, I, I feel that they're kind of going to write. Well, our agreement or our handshake agreement was to 
push your show. If people find that about your CBS College Pick'em kind of, you know, contest and things like that on your show, God bless you. You know, go over there. But mm-hmm. I'm not going to promote a competitor's product in my newsletter. So I want to kind of like ask for your thoughts and feedback on is that something, if you were me, that you would actually include like in the newsletter? And, and two, do you look at the situation and be like, you know what, this guy's got some fucking set of balls asking me to kind of like, you know, promote <laughs> a competing yeah. product in my fucking newsletter? So excuse it's the language here, but this is why I'm starting to get like a little animated and fired up. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to – I've ranted. Let me throw that back over to you. Let me know what you think. I think that is incredibly arrogant. Yeah, fuck him, part. right? This is my, I'm trying to take the high oh road and, 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 you know, through this whole situation mm-hmm. here. And again, it's not that big of a deal, but it's little things like that that piss me off. I mean, I, I'm getting, like, emails how extremely disappointed they are that these links, which was a big part of their initiative and in working kind of like with us here, which was beknownst to me until... Right. Until it was sent over. Now, granted, I should have read it. I shouldn't have just taken the email and folded it over to, you know, the people that I folded over to, to kind of like, you know, work with me and formulate the newsletter. But mm-hmm. my first reaction is, you know, thank God I'm working with the people that I'm actually working with who caught this and took the same kind of, like, you know, notion that I'm thinking right now, which is, fuck you guys, you know? Right. You know, that's, that's, no, that's, 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 that's extremely tacky to, and well, I'm not saying that they it. shouldn't be doing it, but. You know, well, they've gave me the you, opportunity. You asked for three or four lines, and they gave you like a term paper. Exactly, exactly. You know, you're you're trying I'm to fill to a put this up. Of space. I'm tempted to put the email up on the on the stream, but again, you know, it's our first couple of shows here. I'm rocking the boat, but I don't want to rock it like too much over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. But getting back to the beginning of the show here, why you should be listening and paying attention to this show here, because I might start kind of like, you know, blasting people and start exposing to you guys to what you and I kind of like, you know, go through on a day-to-day basis as an entrepreneur here. Some of the stuff is kind of like, you know, really good. And we work with kind of like, you know, some great people, but there are some bullshit. Yeah. Oh man. I got stories <laughs> that we have to deal with that. We yeah. just have to work through <laughs> that. It, it's, there's just some amazing people out there with w- trying to be professional and they are just not professional at all. Cause I mean, in this scenario, you've got, you're asking for something very specific. You're asking for four or five lines and they just totally Let's go see, three or four. And, <laughs> yeah. Cause they can throw like, that we, out we the window. Get it. You know what I, mean? I, I get like a lot of newsletters. I get like a lot of email and things like that here. I, you know, and I know kind of like, you know, as entrepreneurs, but as marketers, once your notification goes a certain, goes beyond a certain length, pe- they're out. You know, mm-hmm. people are not going to. They're just not going to spend, you know, um, more than two minutes reading your message. So if you're not kind of like, you know quick and hitting them with the key points that you need them to hit them with, which is basically, look, point number one here, this game is is up. You can play it on statement games. Point number two here, here are a couple of things that you might want to consider as you go through the process of making your picks. Point number three here, um, love sports here. We came across this other cool product, this other cool like, you know, podcast here. You might want to give them a listen. That, that's it. That's the extent of like yeah. the newsletter. Right. Anything like, you know, beyond that here is you're kind of like you know, asking for too much for trouble. So yeah. I kind of like interviewed it or the team kind of like looked at it as it would actually defeat and I don't think we would actually be doing them any justice or our community any justice by asking them to do multiple things here. My job is to bring people to your show. What mm-hmm. you get people to do once I've gotten them to your show is completely your business and up to you here for the purpose of my newsletter here. Right? I'm just not, I'm not doing it. So that's, yeah, that's my rant for, uh, for the week here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a, I think That's I kind of rambled one. a little too long here, but I, I needed to. I mean, it's been it's been on my chest for for a week now. I've been saving up for this show, and damn it, I was going to lay it on you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. I, I like it. Um, hopefully, that person listens in and uh, takes that advice. Because to be honest, like you're, it's professionalism, you know, and there needs to be a little more of it, even if we are, you know, amateur podcasters and and stuff. 
But with that, let's uh, jump into making picks. All right, guys, we're back. I'm not going to win the, uh, the Statement Games lobby. You can actually do the same thing that Nathan and I are actually doing right now by simply going to statementgames.com, logging into your account. But also keep in mind that if you're more of an app person, you can actually access Statement Games by searching on Statement Games Fantasy Sports, whether it's the Google Play Store or the app, uh, Apple App Store. Now, the process that we're going to take you through right now, um, I know that I've mentioned this on past uh, you know, episodes or if you've heard me on other kind of, kind of podcasts and things like that. The story is fairly simple, and it's uh, you know, one or a process that I've kind of like been dealing with in my family for the past 30 years. Uh, my family, and we'll be doing this on the entirety of, of, of the Thanksgiving Day here, is we create our own private contests. And we're basically just the people who are having Thanksgiving dinner with us here have the opportunity to play. So you can actually do the same thing here. Once you're in the lobby here, we're taking a look right now at the upcoming traditional Detroit Lions uh, Thanksgiving Day football game. Uh, they happen to be playing the Houston, uh, Houston Texans. So Nathan and I are going to create our own private contest. Simply hit create. What do you think? Um, let's make this an eight-man tournament. Mm -hmm. um, let's make everybody pay five coins to get in. And you, you can just call it Nate C's Thanksgiving Day Special or something like that here. And as you can kind of like you know, see, we're, we're literally kind of like you know, creating a eight-person tournament. Only the people that Nathan invites to play in this tournament have the ability to play. For anybody who's listening or watching this show who goes through like this same process here, I'm actually going to make a, make a little deal with you. We're going to be giving out our top three picks kind of, like, you know, each uh, for this game since, you know, Nathan and I are actually playing as a team here. But anybody who decides to create either an eight, 10, or 12 man contest, and you have to fill these contests with either eight, 10, or 12 people. If anybody happens to go, 10 for 10, if, if you as a contest creator go 10 for 10 with your picks, or anybody in your group goes 10 for 10 with their picks. And this can either be for the Lions game or the 4 o'clock Dallas game. I wouldn't make the same thing for the uh, Steelers-Ravens game here, but unfortunately we just kind of, kind of found out that game has actually been moved from Thanksgiving night to, I believe it's Sunday afternoon now. I'm not sure if it's 1 or 4 o'clock here, but I guess check your local listings to check that out here. But if anybody can go 10 for 10 with their picks in a private contest setting, um, I'm personally going to send you, the contest creator, a $100 cash gift card of your choice, and you'll probably have about 85 different merchants that you can actually choose from. It can be as exact, uh, as uh, um, as popular as, as Amazon or I don't care if, if you happen to be a Domino's pizza lover here, you can actually do something like that here. But there's about 85 different merchants that you can choose from here. $100 cash gift card of your choice, all yours. If you or anybody in your group can go 10 for 10 with their picks, it's completely up to you if you want to share this with the people, with the person who goes 10 for 10 with your picks, if that person just doesn't happen to kind of like it would be you. So think about it as uh, the more people that you get to play in your tournament here, the, the more of a opportunity that you'll get of somebody going 10 for 10 with their picks. Nice. Create the contest. Here we go. All right. And you'll have an opportunity to invite people once you've actually made your 10 sections here, but this is, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I really don't have a strong feel for who the lions are this season. I mean, they've pulled out some wackadoo kind of like, you know, wins this season here. And, um, I mean, these guys are kind of like, you know, banged up. Uh, I, I'll kind of like, you know, leave it to you to give like a little bit of insight like, on the lines here. But uh, I, I got my kind of like, you know, thought process on this. It definitely looks like uh, the Texans probably will have to run the table if they have, if they want a realistic opportunity of making the playoffs. Um, Lions up and down. Patricia back on the, uh, F, on the hot seat after, I mean, 20 to nothing shot out to Carolina. Quick turnaround here. I don't know. Maybe they were looking forward to the Thanksgiving Day game here. And just overlook talk of the Panthers. But at the, as if you're the Lions, I'm not sure how you can overlook anybody. But hey, uh, we're at where we're at. It's it, it's yeah. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. twelve o'clock, uh, twelve twelve or twelve thirty start. I think it's pregame twelve o'clock. Uh, game, game is probably. is twelve thirty. Yeah, I believe so. That's usually how that runs. 
I remember correctly. Well, let me just double check real quick here. I should know this, but um, yeah, twelve thirty kickoff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I'm sure everything kind of like, you know gets gets started you know fairly early between I don't know eleven thirty twelve thirty. I'm not sure what. I'm assuming that's a. Uh, is that going to be Fox or ABC? CBS. CBS. I'm sorry. So all right, so it'll be CBS game. So I don't know. You figure. Yep. 11.30 pregame kind of kind of starts? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, the Lions are really banged up, so I'm not liking them to do too much. Stafford's dealing with a thumb issue again, uh, and when he has those hand problems, he is not as successful at throwing the ball, so I think it's going to be a down game for him. You got DeAndre Swift, who may or may not play because of concussion protocol even though he is progressing. Um, and then Galladay is looking like he's not going to play. So those are major assets for the Lions that are just not going to do it on offense. So um, I'll I'll kick this off with my first, um, go for my first pick here. And I'm going to go on the running back side. Carry on Johnson has essentially been non-existent this season. And even though DeAndre Swift won't be there, and I think Carryon Johnson might get a little bit more playing time. He's going to be getting an e increase from like five or six snaps over the course of the last few weeks. So I'm going to say Carryon Johnson under half a touchdown is pretty, pretty ob obvious. I don't think that's going to happen. And um, so that's that's my thing. And what do you got for uh, your first pick? Um, I, I just don't like the lines and their ability to stop kind of like, you know, anybody. I kind of got burned um, a couple two weeks ago. Um, I thought it was kind of like, you know, a, a good play, you know, from a fantasy perspective, picking up the Lions defense against the against Washington, yeah. um, especially with uh, you know, I, I mean, look, you know, Alex Smith is a I guess now kind of like a career kind of like a backup here, but towards the end of that game here, he moved the ball, put up points against the Lions. It seems like a lot of teams are putting up points against like the Lions here. So I, I really like the Brandon Cooks uh, plus Will Fuller combined over 11 and a half receptions. So I, I'm, I would lock in on that one as, as my top pick playing this game. Oh, absolutely. So along those lines, just not um, liking how – Stafford plays with his injured hand. I'm going to say that he's going to be under one and a half touchdown passes. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty for sure going to happen. What All right. Well, um, I, I do like some points actually being scored here. I, I just don't know uh, about kind of like, you know, Stafford. So I like, I like that. And I, I can actually, you know, um, I can actually see Houston kind of like, you know, getting up, uh, you know, a little bit like in this game here, then coasting like a little bit towards the, uh, towards the end. And I'm just not sure if Stafford has enough firepower to, uh, to keep up with, uh, with Houston kind of like, you know, um, perspective from, from the points total. But I, I do think 51 and a half points is a lot of points. So I, I'm going to take the under 51 and a half. Yeah. I think that's uh pretty accurate. I think it's going to be a lopsided game. And to me personally, I think if any points are scored, it's going to be from the the kicker there from the Lions. Uh, but on the defense side, because, you know, my background with the IDP guys is very defense heavy. I want to make sure I get one of my defensive picks in here. And I'm going with Texans D over two and a half sacks. There Stafford's usually running for his life, and I don't think this game's going to be any different. Cool. You stole a little bit of my thunder. I kind of can agree with you. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of feel like it's like it's it's sacrilege if you don't take some type of positive Lions pick on Thanksgiving Day here. But the only thing that I can really lock in with that I feel comfortable with is the kicker. So I'll, I'll take Prater over 1.5 field goals. Yep. You know, his nickname is MV Prater because he's the <laughs> most valuable player on the field. <laughs> uh, you go. So with that, um, you know, we're not going to fill out a full uh, 10 picks here. So if you want, uh, 
you know, I think I'm going to put this out as a link on Twitter. Yeah, put it so as a link or something me. like that. If people want to play yeah. against Team Nate and Team Mark here, uh, just give we'll let people know what your statement game's username is so that they know <laughs> who there is yeah. here. Um, but, um, yeah, let, let, let us yeah, we'll play put with that this. Out. Uh, yeah. We'll put that in, like, the uh, in, in the description, kind of like, you know, uh, comment section mm-hmm. or the show yeah. notes and things like that in, in this video. Sure. Yep, we'll do that so people can play with us and see the rest of our picks um, and fill out this tournament. And uh, so with that, make sure you're following at Statement Games uh, on all social media platforms. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and and obviously play Statement Games. Go in uh, statementgames.com and create a account and start playing. But with that, Mark, uh, it's good seeing you again and yeah. We'll be back next week. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.